The end of an eight-year ban on potentially life-saving science. Barack Obama allows federal funding for human embryonic stem cell research, much to the delight of the science world. But will it make a difference in a rapidly changing world? Are embryonic stem cells perhaps already obsolete? A debate of science, politics and even religion. This is Inside Story. Hello, I'm Kamal Santa Maria. In his inaugural address, the US President Barack Obama stated he'd, quote, restore science to its rightful place and wield technology's wonders, end quote. It looks like now he's taking his first major step in that direction. Obama is poised to lift restrictions on the funding of stem cell research in the United States, a restriction put in place by the Bush administration in 2001, which banned the use of taxpayer money to fund research. Now, that's not to say research stopped altogether. Instead, it's been continued, but with money from the private sector. But money is not the only argument here. It also comes down to ethics, politics, religion and science, and then trying to strike some sort of balance between them. Well, in announcing the new direction in policy, this is what President Obama had to say. Today, uh, with the executive order I am about to sign, we will bring the change that so many scientists and researchers Doctors and innovators, patients and loved ones have hoped for and fought for these past eight years. We will lift the ban on federal funding for promising embryonic stem cell research. Now, this order is an important step in advancing the cause of science in America. But let's be clear, promoting science isn't just about providing resources. It's also about protecting free and open inquiry. It's about letting scientists like those who are here today do their jobs, free from manipulation or coercion, and listening to what they tell us, even when it's inconvenient, especially when it's inconvenient. It is about ensuring that scientific data is never distorted or concealed to serve a political agenda, and that we make scientific decisions based on facts, not ideology. Before we go any further, it's probably worth stopping to explain, in the simplest terms possible, what is a stem cell, what is stem cell research? Basically, stem cells have been described by some as the building blocks of the human body, the very way in which our bodies are formed. What's crucial with stem cells, however, is their ability to become different cell types. And what scientists are researching are ways to use these cells to perhaps regenerate body parts, things like damaged organs or tissue. In other words, harnessing that unique adaptability of the stem cells. Put it simply, some scientists believe stem cells could be used to help sufferers of a whole range of medical conditions. We're talking things like diabetes, Parkinson's disease, Alzheimer's disease. What's not known yet, though, is how long these breakthroughs may take, which is, of course, why scientists say they need more research. One thing to always remember, though, where we're uh, talking about stem cells is where the controversy actually lies, because there are different types of stem cells. Some actually draw little or no debate at all. Have a look at these. We start with the adult stem cells found in both uh, children and adults, as it happens. There are fetal stem cells. Those come from the blood and the umbilical cord or the placenta of a newborn child. Here's the tricky one, the last one, though. Embryonic stem cells produced from couples undergoing IVF treatment. Basically, uh, multiple embryos are created to give the couple the best possible chance of conceiving, and the embryos which aren't used can then be used to extract stem cells. The question is, does this actually amount to the destruction of human life? Well, supporters of embryonic stem cell research say no, and given those unused embryos probably would have been destroyed anyway, it's better to use the embryo for further therapies, maybe cures for disease. But then there's that other school of thought which says life begins right at the time of conception. To those people, destroying an embryo is equivalent to murder, and this is pretty much the reason that the former US President George Bush banned the federal funding for embryonic stem cell research. A lot of information to take in there. We're going to talk about it with our guests. In Philadelphia is Arthur Kaplan. He is the chair of the Department of Medical Ethics, also our director of the Center for Bioethics at the University of Pennsylvania. In Chicago is Clark Forsyth, a former director of law and bioethics at a group called Americans United for Life. He is currently senior counsel there as well. And uh, rounding out our panel in London is Dr. Stephen Minger, the director of the Stem Cell Biology Laboratory and a senior lecturer at the King's College in London. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on Inside Story. I'm going to go around each of you first and just give you 30 seconds or so just to give me a very brief answer to the question. The reversal of the ban 
Is it good or bad? Arthur Kaplan. It's a good thing. It's overdue. We've got a lot, hundreds of thousands of embryos in the United States, probably a million worldwide that can be the source of embryonic stem cells. Uh, they're going to be destroyed anyway. It makes sound science policy because we ought to pursue all options in this area. So I think it's both ethical and scientifically sound to, for Obama to change this policy. Clark Forsyth in Chicago, good or bad? Well, unfortunately, the administration is wasting uh, taxpayer dollars on the wrong research at a time of unprecedented federal, uh, federal deficits. Uh, he should be emphasizing adult stem cell research and the new uh, induced uh, pluripotent stem cells. Uh, so he's, he's wasting tax dollars on the wrong research at this time. And we're going to address those two things uh, more in the second half of the show. Uh, Dr. Stephen Minger in London, your views, good or bad? Uh, I think it's a very important symbolic move by the government. The, the U.S. stem cell community has been, I think, marginalized over the last eight years. Those of us in, in more enlightened countries with very tight regulation and strong government support have really been pushing this field ahead. And, and my American uh, colleagues, I think, have really been disadvantaged, with the possible exception of those in California and other states uh, that have put large amounts of money into this research. So I think it's a very important move scientifically, and I think it's an emblematic of Obama's uh, strong interest in, in promoting uh, science in, in the United States. Clark Forsyth in Chicago, let me come back to you with what is probably a very simplistic argument, but I'd like you to answer it anyway. If something could potentially be used to make someone else better, to give them a better shot at life, shouldn't it be explored to its fullest? We are already getting therapies from adult stem cells, uh, both in terms of uh, controversy, uh, the ethical controversy, and in terms of real therapies. Uh, the way to go is with adult stem cells, uh, not with embryonic stem cells. Uh, it might surprise your listeners that the U.S. in fact spent nearly a billion dollars on stem cell research last year and has been spending hundreds of millions uh, uh, for the past uh, several years. Um, but wh wh if you're talking, if the test is real therapies for real patients mm. now, uh, you have to invest in adult stem cells. Uh, it's, it's unfortunate that the embryonic researchers had to hype the issue f to, to seek the money, saying that if there was just a little money for embryonic stem cells, people would get out of wheelchairs. Now that they seem to be getting the money, they are downplaying uh, expectations of any real therapies for any patient uh, in, for the foreseeable future, saying that uh, they don't even understand the basic biology of embryonic stem cells. The real test when it comes to taxpayer dollars for med medical research has to be uh, real therapies for real patients. And uh, if that's the test, you have to put your money into adult stem cells. And Clark Forsyth there makes a very good point that this is taxpayer money we're talking about. Arthur Kaplan in Philadelphia, let me come to you. As we all know, there's a global economic crisis going on at the moment. Couldn't this sort of money be taxpayer money, let's remember, be used better elsewhere at the moment? Absolutely not. Um, I think Clark's estimation of the science is wrong. I think that uh, adult stem cell research, and I'm on the board of one of the leading adult stem cell research companies in the United States, Tengion, um, is very promising. But uh, embryonic stem cell research has been starved for money for the past eight years. There has been a little bit of private money, and uh, we've heard from Steve that there's uh, work going on overseas. But the bulk of basic research money comes from the National Institutes of Health of the USA, mm. and we haven't really explored embryonic stem cell research. You know, the, the major adult uh, stem cell cure is bone marrow transplant, and it took 45 years of federal funding to produce bone marrow transplantation. What we've seen in the U.S. in terms of federal funding of embryonic is zero. Now, I don't think we know which is going to be better and which is going to pan out to have the greatest number of cures, but if I was in a wheelchair, if I had a child with diabetes, I'd want money spent on all possible approaches. Let's talk to a man uh, who is, deals directly with the stem cell research, Dr. Stephen Minger over in London. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've read that you actually left the United States uh, because you felt there was more opportunity for your research and for your work in Britain. When you hear that Barack Obama is now lifting some of these federal restrictions, do you feel it's a, a good chance to go back, that it's going to be a positive thing um, for the economy, for the whole stem cell uh, research community there? 
Well, first of all, I, I hate to disappoint you, but my, my reasons for moving to the UK in 1996 uh, had nothing to do with stem cell research. I had a strong desire to want to live in Europe, and it's the major reason why I stay. And, you know, it's, it would be the major reason why I would stay irrespective of, of what happens uh, in the US in terms of funding. Uh, let me just address a couple of issues. I, I, like many other stem cell biologists, are completely agnostic when it comes to the source of stem cells. We work on adult stem cells uh, in the brain and in other tissues. We work on fetal-derived stem cells. And we derive and, and differentiate human embryonic stem cells. And really, what you have to do as a scientist is you have to look at each clinical application in, 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 in its, uh, individually and try to generate the best stem cell population for each of those. I agree with Clark that adult stem cells are very useful for certain specific disorders, but there are no adult stem cell therapies for spinal cord injury. There are no adult stem cell therapies for Parkinson's disease. There are no adult stem cell therapies for type 1 diabetes. The basic fact is there are not adult stem cell populations that are capable of differentiating into the cell types that we need to treat each of those different disorders. There are, for example, mesenchymal stem cells, which will give rise to cartilage and to bone, which are very useful for rebuilding cartilage. But those stem cell populations from bone marrow, from cord blood, cannot give rise to the cells that we need for specific clinical applications. And therefore, you have to look pragmatically at what is the cell type that you need for a particular therapy, what is the best cell type possible, and then, and then use those cells. And, and I agree very much with Professor Kaplan. We have to explore all avenues. Okay, let me just Induce get a quick response. Sorry, let me just get a quick response from Clark Forsyth before we head to the break, because he was shaking his head there. What do you have to say? If you look at the base, if you, you want to look at the basic biology and the basic science in laboratories, the way to go is with induced pluripotent state uh, stem cells. Uh, Ian Wilmot, the uh, the Scottish cloner of, of Dolly the sheep, uh, abandoned embryonic research uh, a year and a half ago and said he was going to invest all his time in the uh, IPS cells. Um, but and, and, and if you want to look at the research, uh, look at look at the clinical trials. Look at the clinical trials uh, that have been produced by adult stem cells, and look at the clinical trials from embryonic. And there are zero. Um, plus, there are intrinsic biological problems with uh, uh, embryonic stem cells that uh, no funding has solved over the last decade, and it doesn't appear that any funding is going to solve in the future. Uh, they cause tumors and teratomas, and no one has solved that. Uh, so do uh, IPS cells, Clark. years of research and years of funding. They also, they also but uh, uh, embryonic stem cells uh, also can't be patient matched, and uh, IVF uh, embryos are not going to solve the problem because of uh, uh, tissue rejection, immune rejection that you get from any foreign organ. No one has solved that issue either, uh, and no one uh, knows how to solve it right now, and no one expects to solve it in the short term, if ever. Gentlemen, stay with us. We're going to take a quick break on Inside Story. When we come back, the alternatives. We've heard a bit about them already. Is embryonic research worth all this attention, or are there other options? Back in a moment.